listening to or watching if you're watching this on youtube the self-love experience podcast with your girl shira nicole now you were just hearing a sound bite from jenna turner on america's next top model episode back in january of 2018. now jenna has alopecia no america's next top model they have had episodes where they have made all the girls go bald um for her having alopecia wasn't really a choice she lost her hair and learned to still embrace herself and that she is beautiful. My guest today, Dr. Katrina Sparks, chose to shave her head bald. And just like Jenna, both of them said that it was a liberating experience and have embraced and slayed the baldness. This woman is a boss. She must be a Leo. Mm -hmm. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, not to say, she, but she must be a Leo and you are. Yes. <laughs> but, um, because I'm a Leo, so that's why I can say that. I know. But, um, yeah. When you decided to shave your head, tell us about uh, yeah. <laughs> So I got a story behind that. I have two stories behind that. So, um, first of all, you know, for years, I was getting my hair done. I had every style, every color, everything you could imagine. And then one morning I woke up, because I had been natural, I'm going to say at that point, for about four or five years. And I had it platinum blonde the last time. And I just went into the to the barber and I was like, um, he was like, what do you want? I said, I want you to shave it. He said, I want you to do, he said, who? And he's Jamaican, so I can't do his accent. He said, what now? <laughs> However he said it. And I said, I want you to shave it. Just give me a buzz cut. And I shaved it and I was like, it felt, I don't know, it felt like a release. It felt like any, like my head, first of all, I'd have to get up and do my hair. I'd have to worry about rain. I could wash my hair. And it just felt, I don't know, I felt like liberated. I just felt free. And when I did it, I didn't do it for anyone. It wasn't because of a, a bad breakup or anything like that. It's just something I, I wanted to do. Because, you know, so many times we look at women, they um, define, uh, define for beauty, hair and you know long hair and everything and again it is preference i ended up doing it and the funny thing about it is i got more compliments from men than from women and i made it very clear i think someone had you know and for the most part everyone no one like stared or anything they never thought because a lot of times when they see a woman with them who's bald they associate her, her being sick whether it's alopecia or she's a cancer survivor or anything like that you know, because that's what they associate it with. And I wanted to debunk that, you know, for years, if you look back in history, um, a lot of, um, until this very day, even if you go to Africa, parts of Ghana, women shave their hair, or parts of Africa, they shave their hair. That's considered a sign of beauty, or they wear their hair short. I did it because I just wanted to, I just wanted freedom. I just wanted to rock it. And like I said, one day I was walking and the guys, they want to, you know how men are, you the passing the bar, you know, you're passing the basketball court. Like literally they stopped. They was like, miss, I just got to tell you this. I said, yes, you were wearing a shh out of that hair. All sisters can't rock that. You are wearing that. And I've gotten more compliments from men. I've had a couple of men who wanted to touch my head and I tell them, you touch my head, let me touch your wallet. You know, and I make it a joke or whatever. Women have said the same thing, you know, and I get it a lot of times, you know, you have the perfect apple size head. You know, everyone can't do it. Um, my mom, who I love dearly, she looked at me. She was like, is there something at first when I got it done? Is there something wrong with it? She thought it was a phase. But when I had it for like a year or two years, she was like, is everything all right with you? Is, is something you want to tell me? I was like, no, I just wanted to shave my head. But, you know, and, you know, the older, any women, you know, a lot of the women who are from the South of the Caribbean, of course, long hair is considered beauty or whatever. And she questioned, you know, do you think that's feminine? So she questioned, and I had to let her know, this is me. I'm still your daughter. Nothing has changed. It's a hairstyle. I might grow it out. I might not. I've been growing it out. It's so funny you should say that. I've been growing it out. I'm wearing it platinum blonde. And I'm, and I'm again, growing 
out there and I'm playing around with it. But I'm telling you right now, those clippers is calling me. But then I look at different, you know, and you start looking at the books and you start going on Instagram and I'm signed up um, with all these groups like Bald and Beautiful and the Baldy Movement and all these groups. And I'm seeing all these beautiful women with bald heads. And I'm like, thinking about grabbing that clip again and going back again but now i know no you kept yeah. it low for years i mean this seems like this has been a and minute. it's still low it's still low but not as low i got a little curl in it my curl pattern and i'm telling you right now if i go to africa and i see that dynamic sister with that bald head trust you me i'm gonna find me a barber in ghana maybe before then and i'm gonna cut it off again i'm still on the you know i'm still on the because i loved it i just like the idea because to me you could put on earrings you know, you could dress up. I mean, yeah, to me, yeah, makeup, like as far as your eye makeup, it just made everything. My head just made everything pop, the outfit and everything. And I had a guy told me one time, he walked up to me. He was like, you walked into the room with that bald head, which is beautiful. And you commanded that room. To me, it gave me that commanding presence. Not to say I can't do it, but I think it, it, it did something for me. That bald head did something to me. I don't think I would go, totally bald I would probably do a buzz cut more like um who can I say like a Sinead O'Connor I'm trying to think like a military I think you call it like a military buzz cut I would probably do it like that so I definitely I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go short I have no plans on growing my hair long I don't ever want to go back long again but I may do it like that I may keep the platinum blonde again I like to experiment and play around with this so I go back and forth I love it I love it thank okay. you there's a lot of it's a lot of confidence. It's a lot of just knowing who you are, being secure with who you are. Yes. And, just, and you just own it. You see your pictures, you know, you see strength, you see mm -hmm. confidence. And the thing is, is that it's, it's confidence, but it's never cocky. It's never arrogant. It's never that, but there is a, a, a strong leader mm -hmm. in that comes off in all your pictures, whether you thank you smiling, but it's just like, that's a strong woman right there. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, speaking of strong women, I'm not going to end this without asking you about your mom. Ah, my <laughs> mom. <laughs> so let's talk about my mom. I am her only baby. My mom is 91 years old. Um, she is amazing. You know, it's funny. The mother and daughter relationship, the dynamics is, you know, for everyone is different. Some have good relationships, some have not so good relationships. We have, when people look at us, they always say we should have our own reality show because we're constantly back and forth at each other. It's, anyone was to say, they would be like, oh my God, look at the way your mother talks to you. Look at the way you talk to her. That's our relationship. Nobody else better not do that. But that's the way we talk to each other because there is a love for each other. She's a dynamic woman. We're talking about a woman who uh, was born in Montgomery, Alabama, Mount Meigs uh, during the civil rights. She experienced, and my mother has, you think I have stories? My mother has stories for days. Um, the civil rights, um, the night that the um, church was bombed, um, meeting, um, seeing James Baldwin, um, Reverend Martin Luther King, um, John Lewis, she knew his dad. My mother has stories. I'm actually recording some of this information. My mother has a lot of artifacts and memorabilia and stuff to this day. She's just, you know, my mother, she just decided she didn't want the South. She migrated up here to the North and she just made a great life. Uh, my mother did not go attend college. She attended, um, she definitely went to high school. She started off as a cosmetologist. She got a cosmetology license. Um, back during the 60s and she actually keeps all the papers and everything else and even during cosmetology school she was telling me that there was um segregation there because she has one of the documents and it says on there um white and colored cosmetologists and it's clearly on the paper and i'm definitely going to send that to you so you can um take a look i actually have that she showed it um to me she's just dynamic she does what she you know she does um, a little stiff, but very sharp as a tact, tact, and she's just doing it. She moves around, you know, she, I think she, she thinks I'm a baby. She, I'll always be her baby, no matter how old I get. I'm going to always be her baby. And I just try to give her what she wants. She, she can, you know, they, she could, she go, you know, she hits a nerve. She may cause me to, you know, drink more wine than usual, but she's there. I try to cater to her needs. 
and cater to her every day and make sure she has everything that she needs and make life comfortable for her. I have a heart for the mother-daughter relationship. I like to see mothers and daughters that have a good relationship, whatever it looks like for them. As long mm -hmm. as they're happy in the relationship and that's the way they jail, then that just makes me so happy because so many of my students, especially when I taught for LA Unified, mm -hmm. I would say like nine out of every 10 students did not have a good relationship with their mother if, they, if it was a girl. Mm -hmm. and I really want to see more of that so when I see someone who is this this strong beautiful black queen as yourself and then Thank I you. see the beautiful mother that you have behind you I have to ask is there a connection there is there a thing there you know how have the, having this mother in your life contribute to who you are today my mom, because she grew up in the era that she did, she wanted me to have more. She always wanted me to have more. And even though she didn't have the education, she wasn't able to further her education. She had to work and do things. She made sure I had, whether she was looking at a newspaper, whether it was something, anything to do with dance. My, she put me in every program, even academics. And she found a free program that I was going. I was in this, I was in that. I was exposed to a lot which really helped. And it's funny, people always say, I, I speak to a lot of her friends or people from the church or, you know, just family members. And she'll never say to me, and that's just her. And people always say, well, you know, your mother's always talking about, it. she's so proud of you. She's so proud of you. She talks about it. But I never heard her say that. And for a long time, it used to bother me, but now it doesn't. That's just her. And you have to just accept that's who she is, accept who she is. And that's what she does, do but she brags about me. Thing? Do you think it's a generation thing? I think it's a, I don't know. I, I know she brags about me to her friends and her friends are always saying this, or my mother called, you need to call such and such and such and speak to so-and-so's daughter because she wants to get into this and this and this. And, this. and I said, you would be the person, this but she'll never say I'm proud of you. And not to say that that's a negative thing. Some parents do that, you know, I'm proud of you. You know, some people needed that, but I knew she, I always knew she was proud. Back then, I wanted her to say it, but now I understand because I hear it from other people. So she is. She's the cheerleader, but she's not up, you know, up front and center. She's the cheerleader in the back. I get it. And one of the reasons why I was asking that is because I have a really, really close relationship with my dad. My dad is 84. And yes. so again, you know, 1930s, I think your mom might be right at 1930. She's but, 29. Uh, she was 29. 1929. Oh, is yes. she going to be 92 this year? She'll be 92 in September. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Right. So my dad was born in the 30s. She's right in 29. And he was the same way. I think my dad told me he was proud of me for the first time last week. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know but, what? We can't take it personal because that's who they were. And you got to also remember growing up, they didn't have, like, we have so much that we're exposed to. Not to say that they weren't, but they didn't have, it was a time, it's a generation. Exactly. And the things that we're doing, the accolades, I mean, and they were doing things, but, you know, as a, people just went about their daily business all the time. Mm -hmm. And the things that we're doing now, like, especially as a people, people like, you know, we're kudos or we're profit. It was never done. If you've never seen it, then you don't know how to do it. If it's not modeled. So their parents didn't do it for them. Mm -hmm. So they don't know how to do it for us. And generations and generations, that was never done. You just went about your business. It was expected you to do that. Exactly. So if you got your A's or A's or whatever, now it's like, please, the kids now, they have a racket. You want an A, they want a $10 or $20 for this. So they want this special game or these $200 sneakers or something for getting that. Back then, and then you have those who are old school that feel, listen, if I work, you earn those grades. That's all you're getting. Right. That's, that's what, what you're supposed, supposed to do. To. So right. that's what they feel. They were at the generation, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. So they didn't get all of that. They didn't get all those praises, the verbal and the high fives and all this other stuff. So again, if it's not, if you're not exposed to it, so you don't know what to do. Right, but what I was going to say, but it's the same thing. You talk to his friends, you talk to other family members, and all they say is, Oh my God, all your dad is talking about you. He always talks about you. Like, like I've been hearing that, you know, my whole life. So he will say it to other people, just like your mom. Like uh -huh. they're talking about us to other people, but not always saying it to ourselves. But I, I wanted to hear it. I mean, that's been one of my motivation. Why? Not just, I want my dad to be proud of me, but I wanted my dad to know that 
a lot of who I am was because of him because I was raised by, by my dad I grew up yes. with my dad instead of my mom so okay. I wanted him to know as a way to kind of say thank you too like thank you for being there for me so I now can be there for so many other people but I want to know what do you do for fun so uh besides traveling do you ever watch anything on tv what's the last good show that you saw try not to get too too much into series you know I don't follow too many series I was watching the power series at first I like um suspense and you know what I've been watching a lot of lately because I like Netflix I've been watching a lot of the African movies just to get an idea I've been watching a lot of them because I'm curious as to how their movies work uh, their plots and everything and they're pretty good there's some good movies there Cause I wanted to say, okay, if I, let me, I want to, you know, see other movies besides what we're used to see, seeing. Mm -hmm. I said, let me watch some of the the African movies, and they're pretty good, like with the with the plots and everything that's going on. Some of them are funny or whatever. So I've been watching a lot of the African movies. Awesome. Last book that you read that you felt was worth reading. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna tell you, I just finished The Alchemist, which I need to pick back up again. That was the oldie book goodie, the Michelle Obama book. I'm late. I saw actually her being on Netflix, the whole, they did a documentary because I, I saw the documentary first, then I read the book. Just dynamic woman. She's fly. That, that's what, she's yeah. just fly. There's just nothing you could say. She is just fly. Um, I just love All everything around. about her the board. and everything. I like her because and I like because she talks about her humble beginning. She talks about even though she's a first lady and she's this high profile person and she was the first lady president, she went through all the things. She talked about going through counseling with her and Barack. It was whatever. Her difficulty in conceiving, being able to have children. Growing up in Chicago, she grew up on the South Side being raised by a mother and just her up, her upbringing and everything and the things that she had to go through and um she's like a home girl she's like she's one of us and that's why i can relate to her every woman should be able to relate to because everything she's going through some of us have gone through that and then some and for her to rise up and do and be the woman that she is now it's no excuse excuses and you already know where i'm going excuses okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. <laughs> <We just laughs> at that. oh my god well this has been fun and it has been informative i think that i learned so much from you you hit an angle and a perspective with a lot that you talked about that is not the norm a lot of my shows have been self-love and manifestation and mindset and instead it was just more like hey mm -hmm. this is what i'm doing with myself this is my next chapter this is how i'm growing this is how i'm mm -hmm. doing and it was very selfless and I'm just like, yes, I love it. And you just keep doing you and know that there are sisters out there that is cheering your success, that's rooting for you, that's loving everything that you're doing and just want to continue to be part of your journey. That's what I'm asking from you. Just allow me to continue to be part of your journey, to continue, of to, course. To, continue to just encourage you or whatever it is that you need. Thank you. And you got to come to Africa. You got to come to Ghana. When I set up or whatever, you got to come. You in the field, you have to, to come to Ghana. To, tell me forever to get to New York. <laughs> listen, you get to New York. Listen, get to New York. Listen, I'm going to set it up for you because I know we like nice things and I know some of your particular favorite sores, sores. So I'm going to start it out. I know what it's like here in New York. I'm going to find them stores over there because they do have those stores. They have a section in Ghana is similar to I'm gonna say high end stores. It's like the area in, in California. Drive. It's like the Rodeo Drive. They have the Rodeo Drive area. Maybe not as fancy, but they have their Rodeo Drive, their version of the Rodeo Drive in Ghana. So I'm gonna find that so we can get the fancy smancy stuff. But you're gonna <laughs> want to stay within the culture. But we're gonna want to visit on the fancy smancy because we like certain things and I like what you like because we like what we like. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, if you like this episode, please be sure to share it with five of your friends. You can follow me on Instagram at Mr. Shire Nicole. Um, I'm also going to shout out your Instagram. I have it in the show notes. So yes. if you want to, to follow Dr. Katrina Sparks as she continued to go on her journey to Ghana. I mean, she posts beautiful pictures. So you're going to want to follow her Instagram just for that. We definitely have to have her back on the show as well, because I know that she's going to have more insights and more information for us. And we just can't wait to have you back.
Thank you. Definitely when I come back from Ghana, because I will have stories. We're going to be ready for them. And your mom, too. We need to just. <laughs> yes. It's your mom. And <laughs> oh, mean, boy. She has decades. We have a yes. whole, you, a whole you, season dedicated to your mom. Oh, no. Yeah. You may have to do a. That might be a four or five part series. Because she talks. <laughs> I bet, I bet, I love it. I love you it. are listening to the Self Love Experience podcast, or you're watching, depending on where you are. So, if you have not already done so, be sure to subscribe so you can get an episode delivered to you every single Thursday. Join the Self Love Experience tribe by clicking on my website at www.showernicolesmith.com. Feel free to say hi by leaving me a comment on YouTube or follow me on Instagram at Mrs. Shire Nicole. The Self Love Experience podcast is sponsored to you by Self Care Journey. Self Care Journey is a an online clothing store with unique clothing that you wear through your self care activities. Whether you are taking a bike ride, working out at the gym, going to do yoga, or just a trip to the mall, Self Care Journey has all your needs. Go over to Self Care Journey online, browse and look around, and and check the description box for my special link. You listen to it on the Self Love Experience podcast and we have a special link with a discount for you. Look in the description box below so you can get information on that discount. The best thing that you can do if you enjoy the Self Love Experience podcast is to share. Share the podcast, share the video, share, share, share. Find three of your friends who will benefit from this message. Share it on social media and tag them in it. And that helps us grow. That helps us reach more people. We're all going to each one reach one, pay it forward, and just continue to help each other as we all experience our own self-love journey. Until next time, I'm your girl, Shire Nicole, and I am wishing you love, peace, and nurturing for your soul. And please remember that I love each and every one of you and we're going to do it again next week. So until next time, love thyself.